system because we had too many schools given the scattered population outside Inverness. I was responsible for the new Inverness Technical College, something which gave me nightmares because I had never planned anything like that. I remember passing John McLean notes about my difficulties, which he ignored. <laughs> he always called me boy for at least his first six months. <laughs> I thought it was direct derogatory, but then I read it in Inverness. It's like Jimmy in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah, boy in Inverness. Yeah, yeah. You go into a pub in Glasgow and say boy, everyone that turns around is an Invernesian. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after I'd sent him about 50 memoranda, which he ignored, he said, look, boy, you tell me you don't know. I said, no, I'm being asked to make decisions which are way outside my abilities. And he said, well, do you know? Who knows? And I said, yes. Glasgow, Lanarkshire, Edinburgh have all done this. I said, well, go and pick their brains then. So I did and learned the things to do and, and more importantly, the things not to do. And I got on them. I was summoned before the finance committee, which I rarely went before, Lord MacDonald, and I got on the ship. My first two words, that's a record. I called him Mr. Chairman. Nobody had told me he liked to be called my Lord Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something of a record to get in trouble just mm. two words in. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we had a number of small schools for which I was responsible by then, whose unit costs were pretty high. There was a section of the Education Scotland Act in 1946, which I think it was section 14, I may be wrong after all these years. It was called Education Other Than Its Schools. And it was a device by which we were allowed by the Scottish Education Department not to follow the exact confines of the School Scotland Code 1959 um, about hours of opening or premises or whatever because there were some very ephemeral schools which we opened or closed in particular islands or remote uh, mainland places as we needed to without going through all the formalities because children would be there or they would go away. Many of the islands that I went to closed schools, nobody lives there now. I remember one of my first was the island of Scarp, which lies off the west coast of the northern tip of Harris. You go down by Avensui Castle. Avensui is a word with about 26 letters, most of them consonants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go to Hushnish Jetty and you go to Scarp. There was a school with three or four children, but I went there to close it. They were leaving. Many of these places, sadly, closed themselves. But the fact was that the ones that we ran under the section of the Act, we didn't have to go all through the rigmarole of formal closing notices. We just mothballed them in case we needed them again. Mm -hmm. One of the tidiest I ever did was the charming island of Soy. Mm -hmm. You go down from to Algo down the south coast of Skye, down the Cullens, mm -hmm. and, and Soy, where the Soy sheep come from, mm -hmm. lies there. That was the tidiest I did. It had, had three children, and then one of them went, and the teacher was teaching her own two children. Gosh. And the older of them was coming up for 12, which, as you remember, was the age of transfer. We were a bit brainwashed by the Engl English. People talk about the 11 plus. It was never the 11 plus in Scotland. No. Of course, the age of secondary transfer was always 12 in Scotland. And I, I, I used to run it in those days. Anyway, her older boy was coming up for 12 and he would had to board at Portree. So she decided she would go off to another post. She was a good teacher. A bit of a warrior, I had many battles with her. Um, good teacher, I wrote her a good reference and she went off to Aberdeenshire and took the bairns with her and the part-time caretaker was her husband. So it was the tidiest school closure I ever did. And we had to fill in a form for the Scottish Education Department. And I filled it in and it said, what arrangements have you made for the redeployment of teaching staff? And I put nil. What arrangements have you made for redeployment? Non teaching staff? Nil. No. They both buggered off. And what, what arrangements you made for the people? Nil. No. Because they'd gone too. What the arrangements you made for the building? Mothball. Sent it off to Edinburgh and thought, they'll be back. 
Nobody ever paid any but I, never, <laughs> I thought they never read the damn thing. No. No. I'm sure now they never read the damn thing. They just, somebody just filed it away. But that was my tidyism. But okay. some of these places I went to, I think now what an ungrateful young man I was. I remember sitting in an escape on a May afternoon watching for the little boat that was, had brought me from the south of, <coughs> of South East in the morning, coming back from me in the afternoon. It was a lovely boatman, or we each had a, we had a list in the office of all the little boat and all the people that you needed to go to particular places. And this was a man called Neil McPherson, known as Neil Moore, a very tall man. Between South Hughes and the boat left from that lovely big house, which the wartime RAF chief Terror had lived in in his retirement. Yeah. Um, he was coming back for me. He was a world expert on gannets. There's a number of uninhabited little islands between South Hughes and the Eriske, which have thousands, for all I know, millions, well, thousands anyway, of gannets. Mm -hmm. He was a world expert on gannets. And um, I was glad to say John McLean managed to get him an MBE for his work on gannets. He was a wonderful man a fascinating man to listen to. I always got him to talk to me. I do remember his soft Hebridean accent saying, in their life is their death. He explained how they dive and fish yeah. and eventually the constant percussion affects their eyes oh. and they go blind. Oh. And when they go blind, they can't fish. Oh. And in their life is their death. What a lovely way to yeah. describe the life cycle. Yeah. And he, I was sitting on the beach, waiting for him to come back. And the headmaster, the head of the little school, of which more in a second, had sent a boy to see me down to the jetty safely. And I listened to the boy and I thought, that's not a Hebridean accent, he's a Glaswegian. <laughs> and I said, John, you're not from Eriski. No, sir, he said, I'm a Homer. And I didn't know what a Homer was. Glasgow wasn't social services welfare in those days boarded out children from broken up Catholic homes. They sent them to the Catholic part of the Hebrides. Yeah. What a wonderful place for that boy to have been sent yeah. to Eriski. Of all the Hebridean, Hebridean islands, I think that would be my favorite. Mm -hmm. Miles of white beach, mm -hmm. not a soul in sight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was sent to spend a day in the school. John McLean said he'd had a rumor that the, it was a two teacher school, husband and wife, that the, the, the head was hitting the whiskey pretty well, <laughs> and that there were days he wasn't fit to mount the bridge. And would I go and spend a day in the school and see what I thought was going on? Well, of course, you could not in those days arrive in any Hebridean school unexpected. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whenever you got on the wee boat, the Bush Telegraph <laughs> picture, <laughs> yeah. and they knew yeah. one of them yeah. from distant Inverness was there. Everything was fine. <laughs> Nowadays they talk about head teachers and their staffs being in the hands of the parents. He was in the hands of the parents. If any of the parents had shopped him to us, he'd <laughs> had a hard time. <laughs> when I left Inverness, he was still in post. <laughs> <laughs> he may well. Of course, his county councillor, whom I asked, was his parish priest. Oh. He, wasn't, he wasn't going to tell me. No. And none of the parents, they didn't regard it as a serious crime. <laughs> if he wasn't well enough to mount the bridge, his wife just took all the bearings until he was well, well enough. And when I, as I said, when I left, I, never, I don't know if it was true. I, I don't even now remember his name. But that was typical of the Hebridean school. But the one tall on islands, <coughs> Renegadale in the extreme top northwest corner of the sky, you could only get into by boat. In Varee, 